This is the all new Ubuntu 25.10 Questing Quaka, and this release is packed with some of the boldest changes we have seen from Canonical in a long time. Ubuntu's interim releases are always exciting because the developers try out new things, new features in these versions. And this time we are getting the all new GNOME 49 with a completely refreshed app lineup, Windows 11's TPM backed full disk encryption, a brand new terminal app replacing the old terminal and some of the biggest, most important core components of the system are being replaced with new ones written in Rust. This is actually a big deal. I've been playing with Ubuntu 25.10 ever since the daily builds started popping up and this is a big evolutionary iteration for Ubuntu. And in this video, I'm breaking down everything for you. The new GNOME, the new terminal app, under the hood oxidization and everything else. So without further ado, let's jump right in. One of the biggest updates in Ubuntu 25.10 is the all new GNOME 49 desktop. This isn't a minor version bump, it's a massive update that brings a whole new suite of apps, UI touch-ups and some underground changes. First off, let me clear up some confusion here. GNOME 49 was actually planned to go Wayland only. Yeah, the idea was to completely remove the old excellent session and streamline the whole desktop experience. But in a surprise twist, the final release re-enabled X11 on the login screen by GNOME. The GNOME shell itself is Wayland only, but the option is given here in the login screen so that people logging into other desktop environments like Cinnamon or Mate shouldn't have any issues. But Ubuntu 25.10 has gone ahead and removed the X11 session so you won't be getting that option here. This is Wayland only. But the star of the show, or stars of the show, is GNOME 49 swaps out several long-standing default applications for a modern lineup. The old Eye of GNOME image viewer is replaced by Lupe, a powerhouse viewer built in Rust with GPU acceleration. Now GNOME 49 that we get here has introduced a new video player called Showtime. The upcoming Fedora version has it. That video player is really cool. It has this modern design with borderless windows and all that stuff. But unfortunately, we don't see that here in Ubuntu yet. And the document viewer events is replaced by papers. I think this was replaced in the last edition of Ubuntu itself. As part of this modern refresh, GNOME 49 swaps out the old dev help tool for the brand new manuals app. It's a turbocharged replacement using SQL lightning fast searches and finding docs across your system and flat packs. Beyond the new apps, GNOME 49 also brings a ton of quality of life improvements. The lock screen gets a major upgrade, now featuring media playback control so that you can manage your music without even unlocking your session. Application permissions have been fine-tuned and search in file manager has been tweaked up. All in all, the new Ubuntu is coming with a refreshed desktop experience thanks to the new GNOME 49. Ubuntu 25.10 is bringing a massive security upgrade to the table, TPM backed full disk encryption. Now this is a seriously big deal. It leverages the special trusted platform module security chip that's already in most modern computers. This chip automatically unlocks your encrypted disk when you boot up, which gives you top tier security without having to type in a password every single time. It's seamless, it's powerful, and it's a feature I was already waiting for. Windows 11 uses this, and it's actually a prerequisite to install Windows 11, and most modern computers have this special TPM chip baked in. The new Ubuntu gives us two different ways to unlock your system with this. The first is TPM only mode, where your PC just unlocks itself automatically using the key stored in this TPM chip. Then there's the TPM plus passphrase mode, with this you enter your password every time you boot up. During installation, you are forced to generate a recovery key. This is an absolute must have. If your TPM fails or you forget your passphrase, this key is your way back in. It can. You can save it, print it, just make sure you keep it safe. Of course, this magic only works on systems that have a TPM 2.0 chip. If you're on older hardware, you can still use the traditional LUKS based encryption, which is very strong as well. Now this new TPM backed FDA has a few quirks. First up, it's completely incompatible with a security software called Absolute. If you have that enabled in your BIOS, your system just won't boot after installing FDE. You will have to disable it first. Also, this feature uses a special kernel snap that might not have all the specific kernel modules for certain hardware. You know those fancy NVMe RAID configurations. You might have to disable it in the BIOS for now. Overall, this is a very good step forward. It adds robust hardware-backed data protection. This is seriously leveling up Ubuntu's appeal for enterprise customers and the security conscious. After years of loyal service, the terminal here is officially being retired in Ubuntu 25.10. Yeah, you heard that right. 
May the terminal rest in peace as it's being replaced by Texas, a brand new sleek and modern terminal that's here to completely change your command line experience. This is seriously good. Texas is built with GTK4 and Libadweta, so it fits in perfectly with the modern GNOME no desktop. And thanks to GPU acceleration, this thing is buttery smooth. But the real game changer here is its first class container integration. Texas automatically detects your container setups, whether you're using Podman, Toolbox, or Distrobox, and lets you launch them directly from the new tab menu. And each tab can run its own isolated resource group, meaning one runaway process won't hog all the resources and slow everything down. We are just scratching the surface. There's a searchable tab overview, a slick theming engine that paints colors across entire windows and automatically switches with your system's light and dark mode. The title bar changes colors when you're in super user session. You even get a little toast notification to confirm when you're copied text. Workflow is also getting a massive boost with the powerful profiles and pin tabs feature. Fedora 2 has already adopted Tixis as its default. This is a really solid terminal application. I actually made a complete video on it which you can check out here. But yeah, you are getting a new terminal app now. By the way, if you haven't already, check out my course Linux Mastery Express. I've designed this course to level up your Linux skills very quickly. With this course, you'll get so comfortable using the terminal commands that your friends will think you're a Linux wizard. You'll get perfect with the most used, most useful commands and also learn advanced things like using the vEditor and shell scripting as well. Linux Mastery Express, link in the description, do check it out. Ubuntu with the 25.10 update is getting one of the biggest changes or updates under the hood and this is a huge deal. They're calling it the oxidization of Ubuntu and it involves swapping out critical system tools written in C with brand new super secure versions written in Rust. Now Rust is designed from the ground up to prevent a whole class of nasty memory bugs like buffer overflows that have plagued C-based software for decades. You know once that lead to major exploits. This is Ubuntu hardening its core and 25.10 is a crucial proving ground before these changes potentially land in the next big LTS release. First up, the mighty sudo command is being replaced by sudo rs as the new default. The sudo command is one of the most critical security points in any Linux system. The old C version had a history of memory related security holes. By rewriting it in Rust, Ubuntu is plugging these potential vulnerabilities before they can even become a problem. And for you, the user, you won't notice a thing. You'll still type sudo and it will just work. But now it's backed by memory safe Rust code. If you need the older C based sudo for some reason, you can still install it from the archive. And the oxidization continues. Ubuntu is also swapping out the fundamental GNU core utilities. We are talking about the essential commands like ls, cp, and mv for their Rust based counterparts. This is a strategic move to harden Ubuntu from the ground up, making the entire operating system more resilient. Rust has been growing very strongly the whole Linux ecosystem with a strong Rust adoption, and Ubuntu is leading the charge here. Ubuntu is making a major change under the hood with this release, swapping out a core component that's been around for decades now. The old initramfs tool is being replaced by a modern, more efficient tool called Dracut. For most people, this change will be completely invisible, but for the health and future of Ubuntu, it's a foundational upgrade. Let's jump in. Let's start off by quickly having a look at what initramfs was. Basically, it was the initial RAM file system, as a mini toolkit that the Linux kernel used at startup to load just enough drivers and tools to find and mount your main Ubuntu system. It's basically a mini operating system that starts up and loads your main operating system. The thing about initramfs tools was, it relied on a large collection of handwritten scripts and over time this became complex and difficult to maintain. Dracut takes a smarter modular approach. Instead of using generic scripts, it automatically detects your specific hardware and includes only the drivers and modules needed to boot your system. Dracut's design is far cleaner than the old script-based system. This makes it easier for Ubuntu developers to fix bugs, add features, and keep the boot process reliable. This also seamlessly works with System D, which is the standard init system for Ubuntu and most other major distros. This creates more consistency between early boot stage and the main operating system environment. Dracut also has a very active upstream development community. This means faster bug fixes, quicker adoption of newer technologies, and a solid foundation for Ubuntu to build upon. And it's also more ready for newer technologies like NVMe over RAID. It also has support for a wide range of file systems like ZFS, BTRFS, etc. So what does this mean for you? Honestly, you probably won't notice a thing. Your computer will boot up just a little faster. This is a background implement, but a big one at that. 
Ubuntu 25.10 has a really cool code name. I really like it. Questing Quaka. And it continues its tradition of visual storytelling through its wallpaper design. As usual, Ubuntu has selected new wallpapers through a community competition where users get to vote on the final choice. The new wallpapers cover categories like mascot, photography, digital art and abstract. You get four variants of the winning mascot wallpaper, the main version, a light version, a dark one and an intermediate one. The main wallpaper features the questing quaka logo on a purple background with triangular shapes and the quaka, just like every time is white in the center, surrounded by a circle shape that looks like a map. The Yaru theme has also been touched up, the icons been polished and it goes nicely with the new wallpapers here. The wallpapers in every new Ubuntu version are something that get me really excited. This is cool. This new Ubuntu is powered by the Linux kernel version 6.17 and this specific version brings in many new updates. This is a pretty significant jump up from the Linux kernel 6.14 that we saw in the last release. Canonical has been trying out a new kernel policy. They are using the most recent in-development kernel release in a new Ubuntu version. They are not being as conservative with kernels as they were earlier. Yeah, this means Ubuntu 25.10 might initially ship with a release candidate kernel, but it will be updated to the final stable right after the release. Have you seen something like this ever before? I don't think so. This new kernel brings expanded hardware support with compatibility for a wide range of new hardware, including Intel's Panther Lake processors, AMD's SmartMux hybrid GPUs, and Snapdragon X laptops. I had recently gone to the store to buy a new laptop and I saw many Snapdragon X processor laptops. They are getting a lot of popularity because of the performance and battery life that they bring. This new kernel also brings performance enhancements for EXT4 and BTRFS file systems, which improves the I.O. performance. We also see updates to the open source graphics drivers for both Intel and AMD hardware. But one of the biggest changes that this kernel brings is for the RISC-V architecture. Ubuntu 25.10 elevates its baseline RISC-V profile from RVA20 to RVA23S64. This means most existing RISC-V hardware which uses the older profile won't be compatible with this new release. It's a bold move. But it definitely positions Ubuntu to focus on the more capable RISC-V devices built for heavy workloads like AI and ML. And if you have older RISC-V boards, then you will need to use the Ubuntu 24.04 LTS version. Now you have to remember that Ubuntu 25.10 is an interim release. It serves as that important testing ground for foundational technologies like this kernel, which is being tested for the next long-term support release that is Ubuntu 26.04. Next up. Ubuntu 25.10 is bringing in a new application called Ubuntu Insights and this is a replacement for the older Ubuntu Report. Its primary job is to collect non-personally identifiable system information and metrics and it's all done in a transparent and consent-based way. This is a strictly opt-in system. You have to explicitly agree to share anything. If you don't, nothing gets sent, period. And the best part is it's completely open source so you can see exactly what data will be sent before you agree. This gives you way more control. Now we already had this feature with the older Ubuntu Report 2. And the consent that you gave to the old Ubuntu Report is not carried over to this new tool. You will be asked again when you set up the system which is exactly how it should be handled. This tool is a background update but I thought it should be covered here. The new Ubuntu also brings an updated set of packages and applications. For developers, we are getting GCC 15.2, Python 3.13, LLVM 20, and an updated set of toolchains throughout. The pre-installed apps like LibreOffice and Firefox are also their newest tested versions. And the packages you download from repositories are going to be newer than 24.04. This results in better performance and fresher experience that these interim releases are popular for. There you have it, your first look at Ubuntu 25.10 and everything new in it. Ubuntu 25.10, Questing Quaka, is a bold and refreshing step forward. From GNOME 49's modern app lineup, to TPM-backed encryption, to Rust-powered tools and a shiny new terminal. This release really shows how fast Ubuntu is evolving. It's not just the polish on the surface, but deep architectural changes under the hood that will shape the future of Linux desktops. Of course, this is still an interim release, so while it gives us a taste of the cutting edge, it's also laying the foundation for the massive LTS coming up next year. Alright, if you found this video useful, if you enjoyed it, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and also leave me a big thumbs up. And if you are interested in leveling up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero in the shortest time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. 
Next up, check out this new Linux distro called Omachi that's making a lot of waves in the Linux community. It's an Arch-based system with pre-configured Hyperland setup. Yeah, it's an advanced distro and it's quite exceptional. Definitely check it out. Alright, this is Linux Techs, signing out.